Hello and welcome back to Random Librarian here on YouTube. Today I figured I would just do a little bit of a TBR for August and uh, figure out what I'm going to be reading. So I'm going to start off with the two that I mentioned in my wrap up for July. So that is More Miracle Than Bird, which it's the last day of July as I'm filming this and I might manage to finish today. I'm not entirely sure. I'm about 40% done I think. Then I also have the next book in the Old Kingdom series, which is Ab Horson by Garth Nix. I don't have Golden Hand yet, which is the next book in the series, but I do have Clariel, which is the prequel. So I have these two on my list as well. These are three, all of the books I'm mentioning um, are ones that I currently have audiobooks for, either through Libby or through Libra FM. So that's what I'm prioritizing this month. That is my um, theme for the month and it's made for a pretty eclectic reading selection, which is probably good because my mood reader tendencies mean that I need something a little eclectic. Alrighty, moving on. I'm waiting for holds for the next two books in this series. Does the series have a overall name? I don't know, but it's A Gathering of Shadows and A Conjuring of Light. These are the books two and three in this series by V.E. Schwab that I read book one of last month. I'm like worried that it's gonna get even darker and more violent than book one because that is typically how things progress in series, but ooh. Then I also have, this isn't an audiobook, this is the one exception to the rule that I just laid out. This is an, a comic book, a graphic novel that I bought last year from my local black owned bookstore. And um, I think it's gonna make me sob because it follows Alfonso Jones, who wants to play Hamlet in his school's rendition of Shakespeare. He wants to let his best friend know how he feels about her, and then while he's buying his first suit, an off-duty police officer mistakes a clothes hanger for a gun and he shoots Alfonso. So this follows him in the afterlife when he's on a ghost train, um, and he is surrounded by well-known victims of police shootings. I think this is going to absolutely destroy me, and I don't think I'm ready, but I've been putting it off for a while because I know it's going to be so painful, but this is on my list. I'm, I'm, I need to read it this month. Next up, I have A Great and Terrible Beauty. This is a trilogy. I have all three of them. A friend recommended them. I don't know too much about them. Um, I think she's got some, oh my god. <laughs> The first line on the back is Gemma Doyle isn't like other girls. <laughs> okay, um, interesting. Yeah, so I, it's supernatural. I think it's Victorian or something along those lines, like historical fiction with a supernatural twist. And she goes to boarding school after tragedy strikes her family in London. Shelby really, really loved this series. Um, the third book is a brick. So hopefully I can get through the first book and get like the second and third on hold or um, borrowed and get those read. Next up, this is a book that I picked up from a recommendation from BookTok is why I picked it up. It's Sky in the Deep and I've been told not to read the back because the back gives away like most of the plot and the plot twists that happened. So all I really know is that we have Vikings. And it's by Adrian Young who um, just came out with that series with pirates and it's like half the face and half the face on the two books and you put them together and you get the face. You know? <laughs> And this one I just picked up on Libby today. It was available immediately for borrowing. While we're in the middle of this, I figure I'll mention three that I've had for a while and have recently been made aware that the authors are kind of problematic. So I don't really know what to do with them. I think I'm gonna just read them and then just not really post about them and read them and get them out of my out of my house out of my collection and uh, do a little bit more research as to why why they're not 
considered good. Especially this one is confusing to me because it has the Stonewall Honor medal in the front. So I'm like, what, what the heck did Mackenzie Lee do? That is so bad. That's something that's honored by the Stonewall American Library Association. Like what? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really know. Okay. Um, have three books that I have already started and uh, I've just been waiting for the holds to come back around. So I have The Water Dancer by Ta-Nehisi Coates, which so far is just absolutely stunning. So Hiram Walker is born into bondage. His mother leaves at some point and he loses like most of his memories of her. And then one day he gets like thrust into a life or death situation where he's at risk of drowning and it changes the whole course of his life. And at where I am, he's starting to get a sense for like the, the magic that flows through him and through a lot of people in the underground. So, I mean, it's incredible. It's so, so good. <laughs> then I have The Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart. This follows so many different characters and it, it's from different perspectives and it's just, I like truly an epic, an epic tale. Uh, and it follows people throughout all of these different like nations, island nations. There is an emperor who requires a bone shard taken from, I think, behind every person's ear who's part of the empire. And then that shard can be used in magic. And the magic is like constructs. So it's like a construct that is made from that bone shard to protect something. Um, spy masters, like it's a very interesting form of magic that I don't think I've ever seen the like of before. Beyond the like imperial plot line, it also follows someone who is like a smuggler. There is someone looking for their partner who was stolen in the ship. One of the islands like gets sucked down into the sea and I'm only on chapter eight. Like that a lot has already happened and there's a lot left to go. So excited to see what happens there. Somehow I have never read Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. So uh, here I am, I am reading Rebecca. I got this beautiful copy of it because I wanted to see it before I bought a copy of it for my friend for her birthday and I sent that to her and she really loves it and it's one of her favorite books but the covers for this book are never like <laughs> great except for this. This is beautiful and it's illustrated in the way all of the like folio editions are so I'm excited to finally get into this gothic tale and uh See what all the hype is about. Hype as if it's like a new book. It's been out for a good long while. But I have gotten to the point where they are at Manderley and our unnamed character is starting to try to figure out how to be the wife. They're in a previously shut up section of the house. Um, Rebecca, the previous wife, is just kind of a ghostly presence in and about. So very, very good. I also have the next book from River Solomon. I have read their, pre their previous two books in preceding months and I just think that they are a genius and I'm really excited to read this. It is going to deal with cults, possibly mystical cults, isolation, parenting, whether or not to go with what's comfortable or what's known but not safe or the unknown which has been deemed unsafe. So I'm just very uh, genre bending work of gothic fiction. Monsters aren't just individuals but entire nations. A searing seminal book that marks the arrival of an inignore unignorable voice in American fiction. Sounds about right. 
I also have The Vanishing Half. This I think is Anna's copy, but I have the audiobook as well. And of course it's been a book that's been on my list for a full year. My mom read it first, I think Anna read it first, and it follows a pair of twins, one of whom uh, can pass as white and one of whom cannot. So they live very, very different lives. And everyone I've seen who's read this has absolutely loved it. So, Brit Bennett, here I come. Next up, How to Catch a Queen, first in the Runaway Royals series by Alyssa Cole. I have the audiobook and this trade paperback, which is <laughs> probably gonna end up very cracked. <laughs> Try not to crack it. But yeah, I mean, I have only somewhat recently tried to get into romance novels. So, why not a royal one? Let's go. <laughs> I don't actually know where I picked this up because I really did not like the other book by Sally Rooney, which is Conversations with Friends. But since I have Normal People and I have the audiobook for it, I guess I'll give it another try before her new book comes out very shortly. Yeah, um, I think the main thing I didn't like about Conversations with Friends, so I'm a fan of, I'm a fan of a, an unlikable narrator. I'm a fan of an unlikable character. But if there's not a single likable character around the unlikable character to show that like other people within the narrative can like this unlikable person, it's much more difficult for me to enjoy their thoughts. Also, I hated the way Conversations with Friends presented endometriosis because it's not a death sentence. It doesn't necessarily impact your life, especially if you have a diagnosis and can get treated for it. And it's one of the most common things that a woman can experience. So the fact that she was like, my life is over, and like all of the stuff, I was like, there are so many women who don't know that they have this thing, but you're not one of them. You're gonna be okay. Anyways, um, yeah. So here we go with normal people, I guess. I, uh, I don't know, I don't know. Found Ready Player One in a little free library. People seem to like this. Uh, I also have an audiobook for Ready Player Two, but people seem to not like that. So I don't, I don't know, but I'll try Ready Player One. Then I, oh, this is another one that I'm part of the way through. This is Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell. Um, I don't know why I put this aside. I've been really, I was really, really enjoying it. It is arranged marriage in space with political uh, intrigue as well as cultural intrigue. One of the partners has been severely mistreated by his previous husband and seeing his new husband, our new, our main character, one of our main characters, trying to like bumble his way through being a good partner while like the responses ingrained into his husband are like so abnormal because of what he's had to live with is very heartbreaking. I think it could be very heartwarming once they actually learn how to communicate and love each other. So it's very fun and also very deep. <laughs> the Slow Burn Sad Space Boys in Love Romance of Your Dreams by Lena Rather is what she called it, author of Sisters in the Best Black. So I need to finish this for sure. Then I have Saving Ruby King, and this is an arc that I won from someone on Bookstagram. And the debut novel, Ruby King as our main character. Her mother was found murdered in their home in Chicago's South Side, but doesn't really get solved or investigated. Ruby is now left alone with a violent father, and her best friend Layla is the only one who sees how this is dangerous for Ruby and wants to help her, despite the fact that her dad, who's their pastor, is trying to tell her to stay away. So, saving Ruby King. Next up, The Plot by uh, Jean Hanf Korlitz. And I have sp spoken about this before, I think in an ARC haul. It follows a 
professor who was previously a like one hit wonder kind of novelist. He's now teaching um, writing at a college, university, and one of his students is like, well, I have the plot. I have the plot. I'm going to be a bestseller. He tells him the plot and the, uh, and the professor's like, ah, shit. Now I have to watch this guy be like a, a superstar in the field that I have not remained a superstar of. But then the student dies and the professor realizes that no one's writing that book now. So he writes it and then all of a sudden he gets, so he's wealthy, famous, praised and read all over the world. And then he gets an email which says, you are a thief. And then you have to figure out like who stole the plot? Where was the plot originally came up with? Like he's looking into the light, the life of his late student. He's trying to figure out the real story behind the plot and who stole it from whom. So thriller, but make it about publishing. <laughs> and next I got this heavy book, which is The Widow Queen. This I think I talked about in the same video as the plot. Uh, it's by Elzbieta Szerazinska, and it's translated from Polish. It is a historical fiction novel about a 10th century princess who went on to rule two kingdoms and change the landscape of Europe forever but the cover definitely gives me Game of Thrones vibes. You know? Alrighty, moving along. I won Serpent and Dove in a giveaway on Bookstagram and uh, the book three, I think, just came out. So I might as well read it now. And Witch and Witch Hunter with Cindy has a really funny video about this. So I think I still like kind of know what happens, but <laughs> magic. Looking forward to forming my own opinions. More magic, more beautiful covers. This is A Song of Wraiths and Ruin by Rosanna A. Brown. I think book two is on its way. And this follows Malik and Karina. So Karina is the daughter of the Sultana who has been assassinated and she wants to bring her mother back. To resurrect her mom and what she needs to do that is the beating heart of a king so she's trying to offer her hand in marriage to the victor of the solstasia competition which is a festival in in the in the city and malik enters trying to win a better life for his sisters in that city so kind of possible i don't know if i'd technically qualify as like enemies to lovers but definitely like secrets secrets abound and there are royals uh i also have this series i have all of them i have the bad habit of buying the whole series before i read book one so i'm gonna see how many of uh the books in the red queen series i can get through this again, not one I know much about. Uh, a friend of mine on Bookstagram really loves them. So I bought it on her recommendation. <laughs> She's also the one who got me into reading any of the Sarah J Mass books, which I kind of read just so that I could talk about them with people. So maybe I shouldn't have bought this <laughs> series. We will find out. Um, yeah, Red Queen. Power is a dangerous game and the rest of the series. Ooh, this is a giveaway I won on Book Talk. It's for We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal, which I have wanted to read for so long. So I'm so excited to be able to, you know, finally get my hands on it and give it a read, especially since I have the audio. I was shocked how quick the uh, wait time was for it. People lived because she killed. People died because he lived. Like that's, oh my God. Zephira is the hunter, disguising herself as a man when she braves the cursed forts, forest of the Ars to feed her people. Nasir is the prince of death, assassinating those foolish enough to defy his autocratic father, the Sultan. And I think this is actually enemies to lovers. And it's inspired by ancient Arabia. 
It's stunning. Oh my god. Then lastly, I have Docile. So this has been on my currently reading pile for a really long time because it is so hard to get through. Like this is triggering, I think is the best way I can think. Like I don't get triggered very easily, but there's so much happening here and consent is like not a thing because, okay, back up. There is no consent under capitalism is what it says on the front and on the back. This book is a near future science fiction parable where the debt crisis has become so egregious that people are selling themselves like every like their body, their their future, their years to billionaires or multi-billionaires or whatever they are, trillionaires. I don't really remember how much money they have, but it's absurd. And during that time, the people who are giving up their time are called dociles. And they're usually on a drug called docilin, which makes it so that like, you just kind of become the perfect servant and are even keeled. Our main character, Elisha, he, is the son of a mother who had a really bad reaction to docilin in that she is still docile. So the like long-term effect of it is that she never got herself back and he never got his mom back. So when he sold his entire lifespan essentially to get rid of his family's debt, he refuses to take docilin. And he gets purchased by someone who is of the family and of the people who make docilin. So that cost is conflict. Part of like what is expected of Dossiles is not just servitude, but also sex and also like Elisha's day is planned out for him like to the second. And I just got to a point where like he goes to visit his family and he's been made so different even though he never took he didn't take the drug because like he's been given all of these like tutors and access to like good food and like access to culture that he wouldn't have had at home that his dad is like well I don't want your sister to think that becoming a docile is a good thing so you're not welcome here you're not my kid until you're yourself again you're not welcome here and so Elisha runs away and calls Alex, his owner, early, and the lines are really blurring in terms of like the people at the hotel think that they're dating and that's like bad for Alex's image. So even though the lines are blurring, he's changing the rules and like making things absolutely horrible for Elisha and like. I just, I'll get through a couple chapters and like if I'm on the train and reading it, when I close the book, like the, my eyebrows are like drawn together and it's, uh, my, sh my entire forehead is just like made of like wrinkles and I'm just like sitting like super hunched up like, oh no, what's gonna happen? <laughs> um, so it's very good. Don't get me wrong. It's just very stressful. <laughs> Especially because it feels like, it feels like it could happen. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, okay, so those are all the physical books. I, like I said, I'm going to be focusing mainly on physical books for the foreseeable future because I really need to clear out my shelves. Like, really need to clear out my shelves. And there might be a fun reason why I need to clear out my shelves. So stay tuned if you're interested in learning more about that. I mentioned this in the last video, but I am planning on doing a used book, books that I have read, book sale on Bookstagram. So I think that'll be the easiest way to do it, just through stories. So if you are interested in any of these, as I read them, I will put them up for sale. So yeah. That's what I'm planning to read in the month of August. Hopefully I can get through all of these. That would be 
exceptional. Let's see, how many did I put on this list? So that's 28 books, but I have started some of them already. So it is possible. I hope, because last month I read 24 books and I have started a few of those as well. Alrighty, go team. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't hesitate to let me know down in the comments down below what I should read, in what order I should read it, uh, if there's anything that you have read and what you thought of it. I'd love to hear any and all of your comments. So I will see you guys soon. And in the meantime, happy reading. Bye. <laughs>